here was a world in which we could feature. It was important to us, and we were important to it. I think that's what the secret of the church is. I don't think it has anything to do with theology. And when everybody just assumed that we were brute beasts and treated us that way, the church reminded us that we were children of God. That was very, very important. We've never forgotten that. When Jim Crow America shut our ancestors out, they didn't just give up. They created their own institutions, often at great personal sacrifice, building the foundation for change. This is a land deed from Benjamin B. Flagg, your great-grandfather George Flagg's older brother. I, mm -hmm. Benjamin B. Flagg of, yes, B. Flagg, mm -hmm. of Haywood County, Tennessee, mm -hmm. for the sum of $25 cash, have sold to the trustee of Flagg... That's right. Flags. Flag Grove Schoolhouse? Mm hmm One acre of land. One acre of land. Flag Grove was my... No. The going rate for land in Tennessee at this time was approximately $75 or $80 an acre. So Benjamin Flagg sold his land below market value so that our people could have a school. He made it possible to create Flag's Grove School. I went to Flag Grove School, elementary school. <sighs> great. <laughs> Just great. Wow. By the time the century drew to a close, the United States government had turned its back on our people all over the South. But out West, where the Chickasaw freedmen had been living as stateless people for over 30 years, the status of Indian territory was about to change. In the late 1890s, the United States government drew up official roles of the citizens and former slaves of the Native American nations. Don Cheadle's ancestors were among those who were ready to stand up and be counted. Your great-great-grandparents would have had to travel to Tishomingo, the capital of the Chickasaw Nation, in order to enroll. But it was a last chance for former slaves, like your ancestors, to claim Chickasaw identity. This is the land allotment records for Johnston County, Oklahoma. Mary Kemp, Henderson Cheadle. So they got some land. And the number of acres? 40. <laughs> the fabled 40. 40 acres of land given to them free and clear by their former slaveholders. Can you imagine what this meant to your ancestors? That's huge. That's economic freedom if you can farm it and work it and use it. Yeah. Don, your ancestors suffered for decades as a people with no status at all, yet in the end, they received something that other African-Americans, as you know, only dreamed about. They're 40 acres. The vaunted 40 acres. There it is. And right down there where your ancestors had their homesteads, you can see the town of Wiley, Oklahoma. Yeah. Now, Wiley was one of the all-black towns founded by former slaves. So the whole town was freed slaves? Whole town, all black. Still, can you imagine what it was like for your ancestors to live through slavery? finally get freed, then be stateless for 30 years, and then find themselves suddenly landowners yeah. and landowners in an all-black town. Yeah, amazing. It must have felt like finally, finally. You know, free at last, for real. In 1907, Oklahoma became a state, and the Chickasaw freedmen were United States citizens at last. It humbles me to think of how our ancestors persevered in the face of so much adversity. Somehow, they managed to make a way out of no way. This is the will of Julius Caesar Tingman. Wow! 
and it tells what he left his family when he died in 1917. 40 acres, more or less, in St. Stephen's Parish. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wow, more land. Mm -hmm. what, so how many acres? I mean, did you guys add this up? How many? 65 and a half acres. And this was an amazing accomplishment for anybody, white or black, at that time or place. And for a black man, it was a miracle. You know, I don't own that much land now. <laughs> <laughs> so. And he had two life insurance policies. Wow. Which were good. Even though he had no resources when he's kicked out, along with all the other black people, out of the legislature, Julius Tingman still managed over the next 30 years to find a way to provide for his family. I'm, I'm very proud of my great-great-grandfather. And I'm really sad that I went through my whole life not knowing that, you know, that there were people in my family that achieved, like, enormous heights. People in my family that, you know, grew up during slavery and Jim Crow and, and the fall of deconstruction that still managed to, you know, experience some of their dreams coming true. Uh, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. A miracle. A miracle. <laughs> it is. <laughs> My great-grandmother lived through a time of incredible hope, but also crushing disappointment. Despite that fact, however, she and the members of her generation laid the foundation for who the African-American people are today. They taught us how to be free. And that's incredible when we remember that they were born slaves. Watch clips from African American Lives 2. Learn about DNA analysis or share your own family histories. Visit pbs.org. African American Lives 2 is available on DVD for $24.99 plus shipping. To order, call 1 800 336 1917 or write to the address on your screen. <laughs> 